train, tram green shutters and these um, uh, party walls that rise up like that. Just to the north is a drawing taken from the old state capitol looking at this neighborhood, um, Second Street, um, basically between um, North Boulevard up, up towards Florida. And it was the, the first real affluent neighborhood here. Beautiful um, houses and gardens. Um, and then surrounding the old state capitol from these period uh, drawings, uh, residential neighborhoods, green, uh, Main Street, developed as the first important commercial street in uh, the city. And that happened largely because the ferry was there. Uh, and that's where goods and services were unloaded and it developed. These are photos of Main Street in the Civil War. Um, the only building that's still intact is St. Joseph's Cathedral here, which didn't have its spire yet. But otherwise, Main Street is, is a beautiful series of uh, brick buildings, a lot of these kind of Federalist style buildings. The city um, had dozens of those at one time um, and, and was really a very charming scale, all of which is gone. <coughs> this being the only one of those that, that remains. There's Main Street further on by the river. And an ominous view um, of that. Here you see the ships in the river and the sailboats. I've never understood how you sail a boat up the Mississippi River. Um, they had power. They had power? They were probably either side wheelers or stern or had stern screws. You know, the guys before that, though. Well, I know. Yeah. No, you can't sail up that far very easily. Yeah. But those came up probably under the boat Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just looking at the sails. Yeah, I know. Um, th there's the Union Army um, there, and then from the old state capitol, uh, camped out um, out by the old prison. More of these uh, federal-style buildings that are, that are gone. The city was dominated by those, of course. Um, What's, a, what's in that surviving Federalist-style building today? Do you know? Um, yeah, my dad owned it for years, had his office there. Um, it's um, uh, Spencer's, Charlie Spencer's law firm is downstairs. Okay. And uh, Mark Drennan uh, is running a consulting business in Rensselaer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, here's a plan of the city uh, just at the end of the century. Um, and. You can see it's starting to come together a little bit more, but these two different um, pieces that we've been talking about are still there. The prison is, is still um, uh, there, although it's surrounded more and more. It had a 16-foot brick wall around it. Um, other photographs uh, here looking up from the uh, Old State Capitol, some more of those kind of federal-style buildings and the sort of quaint nature uh, of that. Um, the riverfront, uh, before the rail lines went in and before the levee, uh, was built. Um, all of this is gone. More of these kind of brick, brick buildings, and a really developed riverfront there. Um, completely lost to us. Just no memory of, of that Baton Rouge really ever existing. The, the ships tied in at low tide there. Um, very interesting city that we've we've lost. Um, Everybody talks about the levee really as severing our connection to the river. I guess to some way it does, but the rail lines effectively are really what did it when those rail lines went in. The foot of Main Street hit the river and um, warehouses and other kinds of things. Um, Fourth Street, which uh, in the late 19th century was known as Church Street, um, it was a, a very interesting um, place with a, a variety of different structures. The old Harriman store, uh, Pike's Theater, was the important theater in town um, for a while. This is this map is a little bit later. It's taken from the Sanborns um, just after the turn of the century. But you can see um, why it was called um, uh, Fourth Street. Um, the Presbyterians had a church uh, downtown that's uh, gone. The Episcopals, um, St. James, are still there in a church that's that, um, uh, has built. They built upon the Baptists were there before they moved over to North Boulevard. Um, the Methodists had a church. The Catholics, of course, were there. St. Joseph's, and they're, they're still there. Um, the Masons, it's not really religious, but they wanted to get in on the, <laughs> the, the, the idea. The, the, um, the Jewish synagogue was a block away, but it was, it was close. Um, the Catholics, did I mention the Catholics? Mm -hmm. The Catholics? Uh, the Catholics had a kind of a school Academy um, there. Uh, this is where the LNB Bank 
um, is is today. Church Street. That that identity is largely completely lost. I mean, the, the um, St. James and St. Joseph's are still there, but one doesn't get a, a, a sense of of that. In fact, that, that the whole identity of that street now has been taken over by the uh, presence of the Capitol and his new courthouse, providing really for the first time in our history mm -hmm. this imageable access with two political symbols of power. There's Main Street. Um, eventually, Third Street takes over as the main commercial street after the turn of the 20th century. This is a picture um, uh, touting the water, um, taking on a Third Street, uh, Baton Rouge, taking on a Third Street around 1900. Um, maps around 1908 that show you something of the extent of the town. Um, before Standard Oil uh, came in uh, in 1909, which had an enormous impact on the growth uh, of, the, um, of the city. This uh, panorama, which is, is really useful, taken from the, um, uh, the U.S. Navy ship that was in the river, uh, 1910, 1912, that era. Um, and you can see the uh, collection of little industrial type buildings and the water tower there down by the river. The, the low scale, um, the neighborhoods of McElhenney family had a large house and gardens that extended down uh, to the river there. Um, I'm sorry? That's Gehrig's house, that little low one that's half under the trees. Yeah. He owned a bunch of property down there apparently. And then this really, um, fine scale uh, little town, um, and I don't know if you noticed the march of five or six church spires along that defined the edge of town, and then behind that was residential, a real interesting kind of a division between the um, um, what had become the commercial part of town predominantly by that point and the residential part of town. The ferry at the end of Maine and the river. Um, this, I think, is Main Street. I, I haven't been able to locate all of the buildings, but they're more of those federal style. Um, the, the Orioles, um, which you hardly see here. You see them in you know, Baltimore and New England a lot. You don't see those kind of things here very much. Uh, uh, laying sewers, uh, electrification of Third Street, uh, right around 1900, uh, changed it, of course, dramatically. Um, we had a pretty extensive uh, streetcar network, a streetcar loop um, in the early years. Um, it went um, out Government Street to about 19th and, and um, actually went out uh, North Street um, to 19th and came back Government. Um, General Motors was fined in the 1950s for going around the country, buying up local streetcar companies dismantling the tracks, selling them school bus, selling them GM buses, and then selling the interest back to local. Right? They were signed the federal antitrust suit for $5,000, cost of the bus. Um, so the city, uh, after Exxon or Standard Oil went in in 1909, the, the explosive growth of the city was housing up there. Uh, and then, um, in the 20s, um, as the university started to move out here, you start to get spotty subdivisions uh, following the um, land pattern out there. And by the 20s, the character of downtown, uh, the urban character of downtown, the old parking garage um, on the site where the new courthouse has just been built, the, the um, uh, parish courthouse and the federal courthouse, beautiful uh, Art Deco style, kind of classic building. And, 20s and 30s. Um, the Bettner skyscrapers, you know, the heyday of um, coherent urbanism in that region. Um, the beautiful old uh, school that was uh, between Convention and North Boulevard where the freeway comes through today, uh, that was demolished in the 60s to make way for the freeway. Uh, and Independence Park. Uh, which is where the um, state penitentiary had been. Some of you may remember um, Independence Park. It's any, any trace of it is left, is gone today. The uh, federal courthouse was built on it. Um, the new courthouse was built there, and then the freeway came through, and eventually it's, it's, it's just been lost uh, completely. There was a racetrack, one of my favorite aspects of it. Um, I'll go back and look at this um, excuse me, Civil War map. You can see the uh, racetrack sat out there where um, Government Street and uh, Park Boulevard 
come together. Uh, Baton Rouge did try in the 1940s, which was an, an important and opportune moment um, right after the war, um, they, they did contract one of the most um, uh, successful urban planning firms in the country out of St. Louis, Harlan Bartholomew, to do a comprehensive master plan. Um, and it, it really was a very thoughtful um, diagram. Um, the um, um, yellow area shows what they wanted to make it incorporated. It wasn't all filled in out to the airline highway. The red, of course, is the industrial um, areas. Um, and they went through and coordinated um, all the schools, the um, uh, African American and the, the um, uh, white schools, and the, the, dis the distance between them. Uh, so as the walking distance, the high schools, same thing, and the distance between and the distance away, so they were thought to be placed close to the neighborhoods. And one of my favorite aspects of that plan was a, um, the vision that we should take the needed uh, drainage works, public works, that had to be done in the, um, in the parish, uh, and rather than this dredging these places and treating them as, as um, these kind of um, uh, ditches that are behind everything, um, use them as, as open parkway systems, suppress, um, create low ground so that the flood capacity is a holding capacity in the flood and would make a park network that could be coordinated with the location of neighborhood parks and, and the school network so that you get a green park system out of your public works money, drainage money, and there are other places in the country that have done this kind of thing. Um, very successfully, but of course in, in Baton Rouge, the question you were asking earlier, I mean, it's not hard to do, but it takes a particular kind of um, a political will to, um, to make that kind of thing work. And so this um, neighborhood where a lot of us live around University Lakes um, would have worked uh, uh, in, that, in that way. That's just a few kind of random images and thoughts. I hope they're interesting. Yeah. That's what I got. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to turn the light on. Uh, I'm willing to uh, answer questions if anybody uh, has any. <coughs> I have a question. You know, City Park, the golf course is like 1920 something. I hear there was a zoo there. Yeah, zoo, how, zoo's when, a big word. word. Huh? Zoo's a big word. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for what was there? Okay. <laughs> Somebody said that when the interstate came in, then they decided to move. Yeah, I, I don't know the history of that. I'm just curious about that. Yeah, I don't know much about that. Well, city, well, city Park, right up here. Okay. That's 100 acres of land that was given to the LSU in 18... Seven, I think 86 or 87, so that the A&M could be merged with LSU. But the LSU didn't, was down at the deaf school, didn't really have any land for a college farm or experiment station. So the city bought that land, gave it to LSU, no and we held it until 1924 and we gave it back to them. But it was, it, you know, you, you know, if you know the topography, the lower end of it was useless. Uh, and then the railroad came through at the bottom of it. But then when the railroad went through the experiment station, which is where uh, City Park and the Department of Transit, I'm sorry, the, uh, the, the stadium that's up there uh, by the Department of Transportation, all that was, was the experiment station. When they put that railroad through there, it effectively meant that the experiment station and the use of the experiment station, which is already being withdrawn by the USDA from LSU, that's almost what forced the acquisition of this property. Yes, and, and they apparently had no defense against the railroad. The railroad said, we want to go here. 